Hey everyone, Brian here from Native Instruments. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to set up the Complete Control S-Series Mark II with Ableton Live. I'll also show you basic functionality to get you up and running as quickly as possible, so let's get started. Using a USB cable, connect one end into the back of the keyboard and the other end into your computer. If you are using the S88 Mark II, you will also need to connect the included power supply. The next step is to turn on the keyboard by pressing the power button on the back of the hardware. Now that the keyboard is connected to your computer and powered on, you can now open Ableton. Navigate to your Applications folder by going to Go at the top and select Applications. Find Ableton in your Applications list and double click to open. Now we need to set up Ableton's preferences so it can recognize the keyboard. Go to Live at the top and select Preferences. Click the Link slash MIDI tab. Click on an empty control surface setup slot and select Complete Control SMK2. Click the input dropdown on the same row and select Complete Control DAW1 and do the same under Output and also select Complete Control DAW1. If you haven't already, we'll need to enable Ableton to send and receive MIDI to the keyboard. Find the input for Complete Control S-Series and turn on Track. This will allow Ableton to receive the MIDI when you play your keyboard. If you want to custom map any parameters in Ableton to the keyboard, you will also need to turn on Remote. With the advanced integration set up, you can use the Complete Control S-Series to control various aspects of Ableton directly from the hardware. We'll first load up an instrument so we can hear some music, and I'll use hybrid keys from Complete 13 Select. Select Plugins in Ableton's browser on the left. If this list is empty, you may need to activate your Plugins folder. You can learn how to do this by clicking on the video on your screen. Hybrid Keys is a contact-based instrument, so double-click on Contact. I'll find Hybrid Keys in Contacts browser on the left, click on Instruments, and double-click on Hybrid Keys 2.0.nki to load the instrument. There are two different views when working with Ableton. There's Session View, which is what we're currently on, or the Arrangement View, which can be viewed by clicking this icon, but we'll first start with Session View. You have dedicated buttons for the most important and frequently used functions in Ableton. You can first turn on and off the metronome using the dedicated metronome button. Next, you can use the tap tempo button to change the BPM of your project. To record something, just press the record button and when you're done, press the record button again. This will stop the recording and automatically loop what you just played. You can then press stop to stop the playback. As you can hear, I didn't play the chords right on beat, so I can use the quantize button to lock my MIDI notes to the grid so my recording is on beat. If I ever need to undo or redo an action, I can press the undo button or hold shift plus undo to redo an action. Let's record in another chord variation. Using the encoder on the right, I can click down and it will go to my next slot. I can either hit the record button again or push in the encoder to begin recording.
Let's bring this idea to the Arranger view and work in this view for now. I'll drag that loop I recorded to this icon and drop it onto my contact track. I'll also click this button now so Ableton is playing from the Arranger view, not from the Session view. I'll press the Loop button on the keyboard and drag my loop range and listen back. Let's add in a bass line and use Monarch for that. Monarch is a reactor-based instrument, so I'll drag Reactor 6 to my next MIDI channel. I just want to play an instrument rather than build one, so I'll select Play. I'll find Monarch in Reactor's browser on the left and double-click monarch.ens. On the right side of the keyboard, you have a four-directional encoder which lets me rotate, click up, down, left, or right, and push in to select. I can quickly switch between my different channels using the encoder. I'm currently on my Monarch track, and you can hear this preset when I play my keys. Clicking left on the encoder now switches to my first channel, and now I can play this instrument. Now that I have two parts recorded, I want to balance the volume levels of them. I can press the mixer button, and now the displays show me my channels in Ableton. Using the knobs below, I can either increase or decrease the volume of each part. Holding shift and turning the knobs allows for finer adjustment. I have mute and solo buttons as well that let me mute or solo different channels by holding a mute or solo button and pressing the rectangular button above each channel. If you have a project that has more than eight channels, you can use the left or right arrows to access the other pages. You can also adjust the pan settings of each channel by holding shift and clicking up on the encoder. The same knobs below each channel adjust the pan settings. For a complete S-Series and Ableton integration overview, click the link in the description to view the integration cheat sheet. In addition to being able to control Ableton, if you are using the Complete Control plugin to load your instruments, there's a lot more functionality from the keyboard, so let's take a look. In order to access the other features of the keyboard, you will need to load up the plugin Complete Control. Complete Control allows you to easily browse, tweak, and preview all of your sounds, and much more. If you are just loading Contact or Reactor, you still have the advanced DAW integration, but you won't be able to smartly browse or tweak your instruments from the hardware. Whenever I use a new instrument, I always load up Complete Control first. Click on the plugins icon again, and drag Complete Control to an empty area on the right. If you don't see Complete Control in your plugins list, make sure you've installed it using Native Access. Once Complete Control loads, you'll see the display on the keyboard has changed, asking me to press Browse. On the hardware, I will press the Browser button, and now I can search through all of my Complete Control supported plugins. Using the knobs at the bottom, I can first scroll through all of my instruments. All of the instruments are supported in Complete Control, and also hundreds of plugins from different companies. Their products show up on the display just like an NI instrument, giving you a seamless browsing experience. Let's scroll down and select Ethereal Earth, which is part of Complete 13 Select. Once it's selected on the left, 
I can use the knobs on the right to filter my presets list to find a sound quickly. The knobs are touch capacitive, so when I touch the knob, the filtering pops up on the right display. Filtering refines your presets list, letting you find the sound you're looking for quickly. I'll select Synth Lead, Classic Poly, and the preset list is now smaller. As I scroll through this list, you can hear audio previews for every preset. This lets me hear the preset without actually having to load the instrument. I'll click load at the top, and now I can start playing the instrument. Every instrument that's supported in Complete Control has all of the instrument parameters mapped to the eight knobs below, giving you direct control of your instruments from the keyboard. Many instruments have more than eight parameters, so I can use the left and right arrows to switch between the different banks. On the left of the keyboard, I have an auto button. This lets me enable automation recording so I can tweak the knobs and have those changes be recorded into Ableton. If you want to change a preset, you can go back to the browser, or you can use the preset up or down buttons on the hardware. You can also load effects from the hardware and create an effects chain. I'll press the button at the top to go to the next slot, and then press browser. What you're seeing on the display are all of my effects. In addition to the NI effects, there are also NKS effects such as waves or isotope. Just like instruments, I can filter for a type of effect that I'm looking for, like a distortion effect or something creative. Once it's loaded, I can use the eight knobs to customize the effect and use the left and right arrows to navigate the different banks of parameters. When running your instruments through Complete Control, you also have access to Smart Play features such as Scales Mode or Chords Mode. Scale Mode allows you to choose different scales so you can never play a wrong note on the keyboard, and it's also a great learning tool. Pressing the Scale button enables Scale Mode, and holding Shift and pressing the Scale button allows you to edit the scale. The knobs at the bottom let you choose between a wide range of scale banks and also different scales. No matter what notes I play on the keyboard, I will always be playing in key. I can change the root note and also change how the scale mode works. I can set it to guide mode, which just visually shows me the notes in the scale using the light guide, but it still allows me to play notes not in the scale. Mapped mode shows me the notes of the scale, and if I play the wrong note, Complete Control automatically corrects it to the correct key. Easy Mode changes the scale to all white keys, making it easy to play in key. Chords mode lets me choose different chords and play them with a single note. I have harmonizer mode selected, which builds chords like major, minor, or sevenths, or I can choose chord sets, which are pre-made chord progressions. I can jump around the keys and come up with a cool chord progression.
In addition to the light guide helping you with different scales, the light guide will also show you different info depending on what instrument you have loaded. If I load West Africa, the different colors represent different drum hits and patterns that I can trigger. Another smart play feature is art mode, which is an arpeggiator. Just like scales, pressing the art button enables art mode, but holding shift plus pressing the art button lets me adjust the arpeggiator setting. Using the knobs below, I can adjust the parameters for the arpeggiator. The buttons at the top let me quickly switch between different arpeggiator rates. I can quickly switch between eighth notes or dotted sixteenth notes. I can also automate these changes using the auto button. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of the S-Series integration with Ableton. For a more detailed overview of everything, you can view the manual in the description below, and thanks for watching.